Hello, everybody. We'll see. I'm like a couple minutes late. I apologize. Sundays are tough. Plus, my kids are coming back today, so I've been trying for the past two days to put Lily's dresser together, and needless to say, I do not have a clue what I'm doing, so we'll just wait for, let me share this to see, get, to get um, her here, if I can find her, <clears throat> to share it, there she is, um, how is everybody doing? Hopefully everyone's having a good day, a good Sunday. Our um, February break ends today, so um, my kids are on their way back. Thank God I miss them. Have not seen them. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. I just invited Sarah, so hopefully she will be here any minute. Happy Sunday. Yes, I haven't seen my kids in a Nine days, you guys. That's way too freaking long. They've been with their dad. Um, so I'm anxiously waiting for them to get home. And hey, Shannon. Um, so anxiously waiting for them to get home so I can see them quickly. Um, hopefully, Sarah will be joining us soon. I talked to her yesterday, and I just invited it to her. So I'm sure she'll be jumping out any minute. I wanted to give her the opportunity to do an update Um you know, what's been happening, if anything, with her husband, David, who's been missing now since November. I said December, but he's actually been missing since November, the end of November. Stop. Um, oh, there she is. Hi, Sarah. I just invited you if you want to come back up, if you want to come up. Hello, Sarah. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh... I can, yeah. Do you have a video or do you not want to be on camera? Um, I don't think I can do video. You can't do video? I don't think so. Okay. How do I tell? Um, well, you would just hit your little, the little camera. Yeah, I don't see a camera. Okay. You should, because you haven't. You definitely have enough viewers. Um, so, I see a mic. Oh, you have to have one thousand. Oh. I think you have one thousand followers. You have one thousand followers, right? Oh wait, maybe I can. Just a second. Good morning. No, Good morning. Oh, she only has five hundred and fifty-four, Nora. Okay, so you have to have it. Okay, For some reason I thought you were live. You were. Yeah. You. It was your you were on video last time, but apparently not. Well, thanks, Sarah, for joining. Still, I appreciate it. Well, I think I was on a video on one, but they did it through YouTube, I think, or something to that effect. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. That makes sense. Good morning, Veronica. It's morning there, you said. Well, thanks for joining us anyways. I appreciate it. Are you jumping on? Yeah. Because it's been a few months um, since we really talked, and I wanted to kind of, and a lot of my followers have been asking um, for updates as well. So, you know, for those of you who do not know, who are not aware, Sarah's husband, David, from Iowa has been missing since November. He is a truck driver. He, in a very high level overview, was um, delivering his goods, which were actually um, like 100 and, what were they, 120 pigs or something that he had in the back of his truck. He had picked them up, was going to drop them off, um, and he never showed up. And so, the last video, the last known sighting of him is on a surveillance camera at a truck stop. And um, there's a video of him. He looks, he's on his phone he, and he is scrolling on his phone. And that's really the last that anyone has seen of him. His wallet, his keys, his cell phone, $2,000 in cash were found inside the truck. And his jacket were found in a ditch sort of right outside of where his truck was. 
and his truck was found on a highway, sort of pulled off on the highway, facing the opposite way of traffic, though. And there has been absolutely no sightings of David since. There's been, you know, there's been lots of um, ground and air searches, and nothing has been nothing has been resolved nothing has been found no you know, tip nothing so sarah we wanted to kind of jump back in and have you tell us what it's been like how have you been doing these past few months oh we're hanging in there the boys and i have uh, been doing trauma therapy for well since you know about almost the beginning um a lot of rumors going around that we've had to deal with, of course. Um, I've heard rumors from like my brother did it to my daughter and which are all completely ridiculous. Um, I, I um, have been trying to, you know, get in touch with the police asking for updates through my victim witness coordinator and nothing. I, I guess I was naive to think that if something like this would happen, they would be, you know, in fairly close contact, at least weekly. And I've spoken with them twice in this whole uh, 95 days that my husband's been gone. Um, You've spoken with I them don't twice? Yeah, twice. Two times. All right, and what happens when you call them? Oh, I've I've reached I'm supposed to go through the victim witness coordinator and she just says there's no updates no updates no updates I mean I don't want to know details of course I know that's private but like I just, what are you doing I've asked for them to update the reward poster nothing now Jake Rowley from the United Cajun Navy has updated it I got a I got a message today from a woman who is a retired Spanish instructor saying that she reached out to the sheriff to offer her services to update the reward poster in Spanish and have heard nothing. Like people are offering their help, you know, and it's, I don't, the only thing I can think of is they don't care enough because they're not showing they care. I, it's unbelievable. Maybe I was naive, but I don't feel like it's too much to ask to have a sit down you know, every other, I don't know, at a schedule, yeah, for, something, absolutely, it's absolutely. my husband, it's not a missing dog. Yeah, exactly. I, and so all they say to you, so you're working with a victim, explain that to me, who are you're working with a victim, like, I guess when something like this happens, which of course I'm new at, but um, they give you a victim witness to reach out through if you have any needs or questions and stuff, I don't know if it's just so you don't bother the sheriff's office or what, but the whole county is just outraged at their lack of empathy. Um, I posted, like, someone asked them to, for me for an update, like, hey, can you get in contact with her? And they're like, well, we're sorry if it's not up to her liking or something. I can't remember. We lost you for a second. Are you there? Sarah? Hmm. She paused for a minute. I'm not sure what's going on. That is, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we lost you for a second. You paused. Oh, I didn't mean to pause. Yeah, but um, they're just, I don't know, not talking to me why i mean has there been and you guys please yes definitely put your questions in the comments below and we will make sure that every question is answered one of them was can't you what what if why don't you if you could just go to law enforcement directly well i work i work full time now i've gone back to work mm -hmm. and uh, you know i've been gone i had taken several well two months almost off and i'm back to work now so, I mean, I work during the day, all day, every day, you know, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. and the, I'm sure the sheriff doesn't work Saturdays. Sure. 
Um, have they found his phone? Is yeah, that's the up. Is there any update? So there's no update at all that they can tell you. They haven't no more clues. What what about his phone? I I do know that that like the DCI is involved, and they I think it's sounds like they've taken over. So I don't I don't know that the sheriff's office is even working on it at all or if it's only the dci but um the dci was working to uh look at the cell phones like do a cell phone map to see like what cell phones were in the area around the same time i i believe um i got a call and he asked about some pictures on his phone from dci a few weeks ago and um I don't know. They they were just wondering some details on some pictures is all, and um, I don't know. I feel like they're trying to to figure it all out through cell phone stuff. But my husband was not techie. Um, you know, back when he was in high school, there was no internet. Even there was no cell phones were just coming out. I think, and um, he had to ask our son a lot for help. I mean, he's there's not going to be anything on his phone. <coughs> Can you tell us what the pictures were of? Um, no, I'd rather not, actually. Okay. Is it something that could incriminate someone? No, no. Okay. No, there's nothing on his phone. I don't think they could incriminate anyone. I know he... He worked. He didn't do anything outside of work. His phone is for his work, and that's it. They they asked if he had another phone. He doesn't have another phone. That was something the sheriff kept asking me when when we did meet if he had a burner phone and all this. He doesn't. He wouldn't even know how to add minutes to a burner phone. You know, it's he's not techie. He had no reason to have another phone. When one of the yeah, I think I feel like they think he was involved with something and he was not involved in anything. You know, I've been married to him eleven years. Till we talk every day. I mean, we're he wasn't involved in anything. He worked so many hours. He wouldn't have time to be involved in anything. Number one, and when he wasn't working, he was working on his semi. You know, fixing things. So. If, if we went out, it was as a family, you know, he is just a family man, a hardworking family man. That's it. He wasn't involved in anything. Right. And when you say anything, I'm, I think you're probably referring to drugs because that has been one of the rumors that have been going around that I've seen. Um, is that kind of what people are thinking? Because a lot of, a lot of people who have DM'd me or research that I've done say that, yeah, sometimes truck drivers do because they're on these routes. So they pick up drugs somewhere and they transport it to another place within their. Yeah. No, he would never do anything like that um, to risk his family. His family was everything. He, that's all he ever wanted. The only way he made money was through trucking and he wasn't on drugs. He didn't do drugs. He didn't even hardly drink coffee. And there's no way because a lot of people who don't do drugs, they just transport them. You don't believe that he was in, there's any chance he could have just been the transport of those drugs to make a little bit of extra money. No. Is no. that is that something no you're looking into? I I don't know. I have no idea. They haven't said anything. I, I did see that yet yeah, that um I don't know if it's related or not, but yesterday someone was shot in Eagle Grove. Hmm. I don't know if it was related or anything, but, um, and I, I don't know any details other than there was a shooting in Eagle Grove. Uh, Eagle Grove, where he loaded, is very sketchy. Uh, I've heard a lot of rumors about that, that they they have more than hogs there. They but, and I know David hated going there. What do you mean sketchy? Like drugs. Like maybe they're dealing or making drugs in Eagle Grove. Maybe Dave came up on something and saw something. I think that's a lot of people are suspicious about. Uh, you know, I have no idea. It's I guess it's possible he saw something, but 
I'd love to find out. <laughs> right. It just seems weird to me that the police aren't filling you in on anything. Is our searches? Are, is anybody still searching for him? <laughs> yes. Yesterday, I got a message from a person that was doing a walk for um, military suicides, and she wants she wanted maps of where it's been searched because she wanted to do this walk and search for Dave at the same time. Um, and I have in the spring, a woman reached out, a woman reached out to me this winter and said in the spring, she'd like to come and do a search with a map. And Jake Rowley from the United Cajun Navy said he would definitely, he wants to be a part of that. And he has 200 and something volunteers that he would call in to help with that search at that time. So I'm just kind of waiting for the psychic to reach out to me the the to see okay gotcha but police in the united cajun navy they're not searching at all anymore no no not not to my knowledge and when you say that his phone they found just photos on his phone we know one of the last images of him was he was on a cell phone outside at that rest stop it looked as if he was you know it, things say that um Reports say that he was scrolling, scrolling like crazy, uh, and in in texting like crazy. Where do, have you seen his texts? No, um, my I didn't watch that video. My mom and his brother and his dad did, and they said there was nothing suspicious on it. Um, he parked underneath a light at the gas station and the police thought that was suspicious. However, my father-in-law reminded me that Dave was having lighting problems on the inside of his truck. So he parked underneath there so he could see inside his truck because his lights weren't working. Um, he did a little, he was looking around in his, in his truck. I think he was fiddling with it, trying to get his lights going again. And, I think he did like an inspection, a walk around, kick the tires kind of thing. And then he was off. I mean, none of that's really suspicious at all. A lot of truckers do that. Um, yeah, so, so the, I, his brother and his dad and my mom all said that it was it was it was just Dave. He was he was working. It wasn't anything suspicious. So it didn't look as if he was like texting like crazy, like they had said it originally no no maybe no he was just messing around in his truck i guess and did an inspection and was off you know so you, let's talk about some of the rumors that you've heard oh i froze there we go as well a dm's question hello can you hear me can you hear me can you can you guys hear me okay Sarah. Can you guys hear me? Oh, Sarah's having internet issues. Can you hear us now? Okay, I, I'm I'm back. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so there's. Let's talk about some of the rumors because you know you said there's been a bunch of them. I've gotten a bunch of DMs on them and and whatnot. Let's talk about the first one. Like you said, that I heard that your it was your brother, but it was actually a cousin who got arrested. Yeah, yeah, I do have a cousin that is um, in active addiction, and he's making poor life choices. Uh, I hope that he's able to get through it. He is in jail right now. Um, I don't know what the charges were, but I know it was not related to this. And you don't believe that he has anything to do with this? No, absolutely not. No. Um no, none of my family does. It's all rumors. And I don't, I don't, my brother would never do anything like that. He got along with Dave just fine. Um, and I heard it was my brother's. I only have one brother. So uh, there's, it's just rumors that people don't, that don't know us. No Pants Penny said lots of locals assume he was taken by Mexican cartel against his will to drive for them. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a possibility. I mean, I have no idea. I know somebody took him. You don't just disappear. And he would have never just parked his truck like that. It's definitely foul play. 
he and I don't he was not suicidal he was religious did not believe in suicide has never been suicidal right and because I mean even then you would think that had God forbid if he did do that they would have found his body somewhere yeah um, or blood or a note or something at least he also had a I don't I, th I think I mentioned in the last one he had a semi that he was fixing up you know he had goals future goals this truck was nearly ready to be driven like his dream truck you know the dis the make of this truck was exactly what he wanted and um he was looking forward to driving it mm -hmm. yep and besides the jacket that they found when they found his jacket tell us a little bit about how far away from the truck was his jacket that they found oh maybe 15 steps i mean not not far wow so it was that close no it was just right in the ditch across the the other lane of traffic wow. in the ditch and his money cell phone all of that was found in his anything else suspicious found in his truck no not i don't know they never gave me a list of what they took i have no idea what they took they they it makes no sense what they did when i w i got there because i i was they told me where it was and me and his mechanic went there and his mechanic was his friend too they go hunting together um he talks to dave just about as much as i do i mean dave works all the time he talks to him before he gets home to me because he parks his truck there um we live in town and we don't have a place for him to park his truck so he parks it at his mechanics and then hops in his pickup truck and goes home and so don knew he was missing and i i didn't want to go there alone and i didn't want to bring the kids there so i asked don to go with me and he hopped in my car and we went and they didn't have it taped off like it was so suspicious and i do not understand why it was not treated like a crime because who parks their truck in the middle of the road leaves their wallet their phone it's highly like not normal and everyone i mean they i say can i get in the truck and they said yeah and well i didn't go in it because i was like this is a crime scene why would i why would they let me go in here and then when after everything was said and done i'm like well what are you gonna do with the truck i don't know <laughs> well it's been sitting there 15 hours it can't sit there any long you know right so i took it and then they they came and took it to search it two days later well wouldn't that all be inadmissible i don't understand the point of it yeah, that they didn't search it the day of. That's so bizarre. Oh, and they it's never so, like I don't get it. It's so frust it's just so frustrating. And they didn't look for fingerprints or DNA or any of that that you're you're aware of. They didn't fingerprint because apparently that only works good in the movies. That's what the sheriff said. Then why do they fingerprint every person in the world that gets arrested? What's wow. the point? Good lord. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think I've told you I've called the sheriff a number of times and I can't get through to save my life. And I think I'm not the only one. I think some of my followers have as well. And, and there are even news people like um, Sioux City News came when I had COVID and wanted to interview. And I was like, I, I can't today. I, you know, I was in active COVID. I didn't feel like seeing anybody. And I thought to myself, if he, he doesn't have an interview with me, He's not going to be able to talk to anyone because the sheriff sure as hell ain't going to talk. And so I offered um, Dave's parents, you know, to do an interview. I called Elmer. I said, Elmer, I need a favor. I can't do this today. But if, if they don't interview you, they're not going to interview anyone. And, we're, and it's going to go cold. So, of course, Elmer was, you know, I can do that. And the sheriff declined an interview. I don't understand why he doesn't do press conferences. I don't get it. I know it's only small town in Sac City, but it's my husband's missing. It's ridiculous. I've never heard of such a thing. I've and then and I turned him into the ombudsman to the, you don't know what, do you know what the ombudsman is? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And the ombudsman actually called and to told him my complaints about lack of communication. He tells the ombudsman he'll work on that. Haven't heard a word. Lied to the ombudsman. That is horrible. I just like, they were so incompetent. It's unbelievable. Um, it's and they're doing nothing to help themselves. Like, I asked them to make a, a um, 
Facebook page for the for the Sac County Crime Stoppers. They made the Facebook page but have posted nothing on it. What's the point of making the page? I don't get it. Right. It's Absolutely. like everyone is having to do their jobs for them. Everyone's searching for them, updating the reward fund. It's what is so the reward fund at right now? Twenty seven thousand eight hundred. Are those all mainly through donations too? The ombudsman, sorry, someone asked about what the ombudsman is. The ombudsman is the the person in charge of all of the sheriffs in the state, like all of the sheriff's departments. And the ombudsman said he can't do anything to help right now because they, they typically come in after a case is closed. And his so, case is not closed, correct? No, absolutely it's, not. It's a cold case. It's, is it considered a cold case? I don't know. Well, that's, I mean, it's just, it's so frustrating. It's become a joke. It's just become a joke. I just don't understand why they're not doing anything. And it, it's not just me that cares. It's the county. It's it's his missing person. Why do you not update your county? To me, like, if you, if you cared, you would. And that was going to be a question when you say it's the county. Is there, have you reached out to the district attorney? No. I mean, that might be something that you, you know, just to see if there's a way, what their thoughts are, if they can help, if there's, you know, any way that they can light a fire under the police, um, police buds, because something needs to be done. Um, someone said, wasn't there a cigarette near the truck that they never collected and David doesn't smoke? I, I saw one, like somebody had put it out with their fingers, you know, how it, it bends into an L shape when you put them out and um I don't know if if it was I I never saw him pick it up I thought like should I tell someone to pick it up I, and I thought oh they'll surely know what to do you know I don't I can't I shouldn't tell them what to do um I don't know if it was one of the police officers maybe the person driving uh because they had to unload the truck I don't, but I don't know who it was. It wasn't David's because he doesn't smoke. He chews. And they never found any of his like dip or anything. I don't know. So, um, think of go between a Vic Okay. So, I mean, I have called the, I have called, as you know, the sheriff's department. Is that what you would suggest people to continue doing is to just, call the sheriff's department it doesn't seem to help they <laughs> i'm sure they're getting calls and that's what i don't understand why they just don't give a press conference an update or maybe a post an update just i don't get it because and i'm not even saying i'm not saying they're not doing anything i never said that but they've never told me what they're doing i have not i've, had, I've talked to them twice one was to interview me and the other was for that update on December 9th that they posted. That's it. I mean, yeah, people it's are saying ridiculous. That should call the old omuds, omudsman. Um, ombudsman. I'm, but I'm happy to do whatever. Like I said, I've called the sheriff a bunch of times with, I think they actually were getting frustrated with me because the woman who was answering the phone was not, uh, not nice at all whatsoever. The times that I called. Yeah. She wasn't on messenger either. Excuse me. What can, what else can, for people that don't know, a lot of these towns are like two. Oh yeah, it's a tiny town. How big is your town? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, the town I work in is eleven hundred. The one I live in is about, I think, nine hundred. Sac City has more, but I don't know exactly. I maybe I don't. I don't even want to give a number, but it maybe three thousand. I don't know. It's it's small. They wanted people are asking for a picture of him. Hang on, I have what you guys. Let me just Okay, so let me, I just got one. So let me um, put it up so people can see what he looks like. Uh, 
Oh, this is in Sac County, Iowa. So there is his missing persons, his missing persons photo, you guys. So you guys can all sort of see what what he looks like. Um, yeah, and you know, some other rumors I've heard, like maybe he just wanted to disappear. My husband um, was not an unhappy person. He, We have a happy marriage. Uh, our children were conceived through in vitro. Um, they were very wanted. He wanted a family his whole life. He waited, you know, he always would tell me, I wish you'd have met me sooner so we could, you know, have more time together. He, he was, we didn't have an unhappy marriage. We were getting along fine. My family was here visiting, um, my, my family, I mean, my daughter and her husband or better other half. And then my grandson were here for Thanksgiving from Florida and he, they have, they have a good relationship. There's, he was wanting to see her and our grandson. Um, he didn't just want a divorce or anything like that. It, it was not that our, we just celebrated an anniversary a week before. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is, it's just, it's, it's the whole case is just so, it's just so bizarre to me. Um, I can't see any of And that. everywhere I go, like everyone has been so, I always get emotional when I talk about this, but people, strangers just come and hug me and say they're praying for me and hoping they find David. And, um, I have a lot of support. So, you know, I know I'm going to be all right. I just want to know what happened to him. I don't, I don't understand. He didn't deserve this. He's a good man. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense that they are not, it's almost like they've just sort of like forgotten about the case, which is so frustrating. What could be more important in this little town than a missing person? I don't understand. It doesn't, the only thing I, I can think of is he just doesn't care. Like, what, how? <laughs> two nine, two ten year old boys don't have a dad and you can't update the family. It's just heartbreaking. <laughs> Have you have you considered getting a private investigator? Yeah, I have. I I just I just I kind of put it off, just hoping he shows up or something. But he's not. It's been ninety five days. I do think a private investigator would really help you. And you know, I know that they're not cheap, but I'm sure if you you know started to go fund me or something to help support that, I have no doubt you would have people who could help who would donate and help to that cause because it just, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe if you found a private investigator, they would, they, I mean, you know, they would do more work than what the police are doing. Sorry. I just got a phone call in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Cause I'm not getting anywhere with the police. If there are any private investigators who are watching this, we've had some before. Um, I know of at least one who follows me. You know, please shoot me a DM. Let me know if there is anything that Sarah, that you can think that Sarah can be doing or that we can be doing to help. Because it's just, it's, it's just, this is what's so frustrating to me about this case. I obviously, I heard about the case, reported about it, had you on thinking that months, you know, something, there would be some sort of an update and they're just, there's nothing, like not nothing. Like it's just, to me, it seems like, how are the police not being held accountable for their lack of like doing- There's anything? no consequences. There's no consequences. I don't understand. Who's Tim Miller, Cindy, if you want to tell, is he a TikTok person? Is that what he does? He looks for, I don't know who Tim Miller is. No, and that's the other thing is like, well, I'm thinking that, you know, a private investigator would help, but also if you sent an email or gave a call to the district attorney to see, you know, what their thoughts are on this, what, if, if anything, like where, do they have thoughts on this? Do they think it's suspicious? I mean, they have to be a little bit involved. Mm -hmm. Tim Miller is the one who found Aubrey, the Miller, Tim Miller EquiSearch. Oh, okay. I did contact EquiSearch and I haven't heard back. Um, like when you 
go onto their website, you have to call first. And I called, and it shows the first step is calling, and then you're supposed to wait for them to reach out for you, and I haven't heard back. Hmm. But I do I know that this Texas Equa Search, I hope I'm saying it right, um, they're going to be opening a branch or starting a branch in Iowa. And I, it's a lady, a relative of who the person that's going to be starting it reached out to me and told me to call them. And I did, so I'm just kind of waiting to hear back. Well, we can definitely reach out, too, on your behalf um, and just kind of put some pressure to see if that's something. I know someone said London. Cindy, does Lundy, London work with them or know who they are or how would London? I love London. So I, I could definitely reach out to her and ask her um, if that's something that you would want us to help with as well. Yeah, it's you know, thankfully, you know, I'm in Iowa and it's been a mild winter for the most part. Most of the snow has gone now and I'm hoping some searches will start again. I just think people are kind of wondering where to search from here that hasn't been searched already. But what has been searched? How far have they searched? I mean, is it have they how I know it's been what I've read air ground you know, hun you know, hundreds, thousands of acres. What, what have they, do you know, had they only searched near where his truck was found or other places as well? I believe they searched his route mo for the most part. Uh, Jake Rowley from the United Cajun Navy directed most of those searches. I've seen the DCI out as well mm -hmm. in the area where he was, um, uh, the exit for off of 20 they searched in that area and up to where he was found the dci did a real thorough search um but a hundred thousand acres is what jake had said they searched so and they found and the only clue that they found was his jacket that was well that was found the first night i don't think that they found anything in the searches um so what i mean how can we help you then how can the followers help you what can we do to sort of help support i don't know what did you say to reach out to the um the Omar is that we said we could definitely do that and then someone said that london knows how to get a hold of this equisearch um, so I can definitely reach out to London and see, you know, what her thoughts were. I guess they played a big part. Um, they recently played a big part in the Audrey, um, the Audrey, the Audrey, oh my God, I'm drawing a Cunningham case. Um, you know, the little missing girl. So they might be able to help. Yeah. And the governor, um, I don't, I don't know who, else. I don't, I'm not, I've never done this before, so I don't even know, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what my thought would be though that you could definitely send an email or give a call to the district attorney as well yeah. to say like, what is happening here? Why am I getting no support? My husband's been missing since November. Like, it just seems so weird to me that it, it's it's almost like as if they've just closed up the case and they're not doing anything with it. I, I don't know. I don't know. They. I know. Last I heard the the um, DCI. Department of Criminal Iowa Department of Criminal Inve Investigations took over, but regardless, like, couldn't they talk to them and get a hold of me? Let me know how things are going. I don't. You would think so. I don't I understand. I I was told that the county attorney was going to reach out. Heard nothing. I haven't heard anything from anyone. It's just all like, oh, we'll call you back. People say, oh, we'll call. Yeah, they tell them to call. Oh, they well, nothing. I don't know. I don't get it. it. The only thing, the only answer I can think of is they just simply don't care. Because if they did, they would. What about his, the rest of his family? His does siblings or parents or his, any of that? His, his brother, um, you know, initially was, he would go talk to the sheriff and stuff. And he, I haven't heard anything many updates about that recently. His mom and dad are in their 80s. They're you know, elderly and his mom's just broken. She's cries every day. Her heart's broken and she has um, really bad arthritis. She can 
she has special shoes to walk with because her, her ankles have been they curve from arthritis and you know they they can't she doesn't hardly go anywhere um her his dad's in good real good shape for his age but his heart's broken too i mean do you all live near each other uh they live in sac city where dave grew up and um i live in wall lake okay but yeah we it's close it's 15 minutes it's not far okay. i actually saw his brother last night we were up for supper and he walked in uncle steve walked in and um yeah we keep in close contact and what did they say did they think happened they they don't know either they're just as baffled as me i mean they know he wasn't involved in anything and they know i feel like the police are trying to pin it on something that dave was involved in and he wasn't they're barking up the wrong tree and i think there he's he the sheriff thinks that he was involved in something and he wasn't involved with drugs i don't know what he what he thinks dave's involved they in you, but they don't tell you anything no no so could you do um a freedom of info a freedom of information act to get all of the documents that they have i don't know you should be able to all of that stuff is is public you just have to request for it so you know like finding out exactly what they have done so far anything that they saw that was suspicious all the things mm -hmm. um i would think that you could and again if someone's smarter than me on in the comments please let me know if i'm wrong but i would think that you could um get a you know through the freedom of information act get all of the information that they have on the case so far you know that in which might do, that? Do, you, do you have to have a lawyer to do that or mm -mm. no nope. just walk in there well yeah you have to make a request and okay. It's part of the first right amendment. It's part of our first, you know, amendment rights. Um, and so, because all of that stuff should be, it's not hidden. It should all be, you should have access to all of it. So you might just have to do that, you know, Freedom of Information Act, like use that as an example and write a letter or go down there with it or email or something and say that you want you want all of your husband's every piece of paper that every little bit of information that they have on him yeah and i'm motley is saying is that a pa could def pi could help with that absolutely if you had a pi they would be the ones who would be going and doing all of that you yeah. know nebraska said could you take the reward money and hire a private investigator it's not my reward money it's um uh, it's a crime stoppers reward fund so whatever is not used will like if it doesn't go out if somebody doesn't turn in what they know and get it it will stay in for the next person however the twenty thousand dollars will go back to what they're they just put the money in there for now if it doesn't go out at by the end of november it'll go back to the state or the county or whatever, wherever they got it from. I don't know how to explain They They got money from a grant or something and they're using part of that money as the reward fund. But if it doesn't go out, they're going to take it back out. It's I mean, not my money. Right. Right. Which makes sense. I do think that setting up a GoFundMe account to get you a private investigator would be very, very beneficial. I think that a, a PI could help you significantly. Okay. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, you know, because what I've noticed is, you know, obviously on TikTok, there's a ton of, you know, GoFundMes, this, that, and the other thing, but you you actually have a real reason why you need one. Like, it's not, you're not just bullshitting saying, get GoFundMe so I can get these pair, this pair of jeans or whatever. Like, yeah. you really, really need it. And I think getting a private investigator, contacting the DA's office, getting a private investigator are two things that very low hanging fruit that you could do tomorrow from a phone call, you know, easily because well, thank I you for the advice. Hmm? Thank you. Oh yeah, of course. I would think that the, that the district attorney, if nothing else would talk to you about the case and, you know, I mean, cause they're not even an invest. What, they're just investigating it right now as a missing person, right? Homicide. None of that has been brought up. Oh, I wouldn't know. 
That is just... They've like, never told me. I do know that um, he's in the missing... I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a missing person registry. Because someone told me to make sure he's put on that. And I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, that Find me was exploited like for missing that. persons or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I I told them to do that, and they did get him put in there. So I would assume they're in cer they're cer it's a missing person case. But they never really said flat out. Right, right. So depressing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are saying, go fund me, go fund me, get a PI. I think you would have a lot of success with that. You know, especially since people know your story. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, without a doubt. And if you have any, you know, photos of the family all together, looking happy or him and his rig, all of that stuff would help. You could post that with the GoFundMe as well. Okay. Yeah, it does seem weird, Carrie, that the police, no one has been in touch with you guys at all, essentially, since, what, did you say three months ago, two months ago? Uh, December 8th was the last time the sheriff had a meeting with me and his dad and his brother. Like, that's what I want again. It's just to sit down with all of us so that we can ask questions and get an update as to the progress they've made, if any. Like, I don't want details. I don't want to know if John Smith is a suspect it's i understand that i i can't know that that's fine but i don't know i just wonder like i don't know what was done in eagle grove i don't i feel like i mean they waited a whole like five days to go to eagle grove and when five would they days when, what would they normally do i don't know well, i don't know when the cops I mean, they knew he was missing. They knew he loaded oh, last in Eagle waited Grove. For five days. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. The cops waited for five days to go to Eagle Grove? Yeah. It was like a, a, like plenty of time for them to get away if they were involved in anything. Do you think they could be? A lot of people well, have asked who that knows? question. I mean, he loaded there. That's where he was last seen. Do you think the police are involved in any way? Who knows? I've heard a stranger thing than corrupt police. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that, right, I mean, Katie, Carrie said five days is insane. It's crazy. Like, by it within five days, like. <laughs> they could have been to Mexico or wherever. I don't know. Canada. Shit, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Um, isn't the sheriff related to someone in Eagle Grove? I heard that the, the sheriff in Eagle Grove is related to the owner of the Eagle Grove. Um, Franchise or whatever. Yeah, wherever he was loading, but I don't know. Yeah. It could be rumors too. Yeah, it's so horrible. Um, you know, I like to keep these interviews for an hour, and we've been about an hour, so I want to make sure that we get everyone's questions. If anybody wants to come up in the box and ask Sarah a question directly, just request that in the bottom. Um, otherwise, we can just continue asking the questions that you guys post um, in the comments as well. Um, Nebraska said, if they have people of interest, wouldn't they want to know from you who they are? I don't, I don't know. They, <laughs> they don't talk to me. It's become a joke. Like, I don't know. I've told, you know, I've told, I don't think, I don't, I don't know anyone who would have something to do with my husband's disappearance. I, I think my reasons for thinking it was like a kidnapping kind of thing is David would have called me if there was something fishy going on or he would have called 911. He was not afraid to call the police if he saw something suspicious or somebody speeding or somebody driving erratically. Even outside our house, he's called 911 because people are going too fast on the highway by our house. He's not afraid to do that. He would have called if he had an inkling that he was in danger. And he didn't. His phone was still on the passenger seat. Do you know who his last, but I mean, I, I know you haven't seen it, but do you know who his last phone call was to? No, I, I think it was his, his, one of his friends from high school, his, his best friend. And, but I don't know for sure. I never, I don't have his phone. They still have his phone. They still have his wallet. They still yeah. have the money that was in his wallet. I mean, I would think you could subpoena all of that stuff, but I'm not a lawyer, but I would think that you would be able to. 
Well, they uh, tell me they and, tell me it's evidence or whatever. Well, can't you put all that his phone stuff onto another phone and give me his phone? I'm right. still paying for it, you know. Or I mean, a lot of times when you look at that, yes, I understand it's evidence, but it's so wrapped so well, like in plastic baggies and stuff that, and you have to wear gloves. Like you're not gonna, if you were to see it, like they're, you're not gonna transfer anything to it. Yeah. yeah. Like if that's what they're worried about. I don't know. Excuse me. Um, Tamara said that you can get the cell phone records. Have you looked into that? No. Um, I have. I have it online. I can look. I'm sure. I I just haven't looked because I don't know why. I just. I I still swear. Like I'm in shock. Still. I know, and I'm thinking straight. Like, I feel like. I'm on the Truman Show. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't my real life. Like, he's going to come through the door and say, well, you handled that well. You know, like, it doesn't feel real still. Yeah. It's like Groundhog Day. It's like you're living the same thing over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. What, does anyone have, we have five minutes left. I want to make sure that we covered every question that you guys have um agree everybody is saying a pi a pi you need a pi i think it wouldn't hurt at all sarah to start a a gofundme um you know telling people that that's what you're raising the money for what do you mean the interview with me is off like uh, yeah. the interview with her is off i don't know what does that mean yeah nebraska what does that mean Right, you could find one pro bono too, Karen. Yep, you're right. Um, yeah, and you know how to start a, a GoFundMe, correct? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody is saying that they would chip in, like they want to get you a PI um, because something needs to be done, and the police clearly are not doing anything at all in regards to your case, which is so sad. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm distracted. My through this whole thing my kids are playing games down there and i can hear me all and oh that's okay so nebraska um nebraska said why wouldn't you with her okay nebraska said why would you have not gotten cell phone records the first day i i don't i don't know no i have no good answer for that i was in shock i was upset not i was thinking the cops would handle it I was worried about my kids, worried about, I had so many visitors coming in and out, like eight to 10 people a day for months. Yeah, she had a lot going on, a lot. Um, and I, the other thing is, I, because I don't think he had anything to do with it. I don't think the records would show anything. I'm so, I'm so conf, I just know he had nothing to do with it. There's nothing, I just know it had nothing to do with his phone. I think he came up on something he wasn't i know he wasn't involved in anything i just don't think it would show anything i i don't know you never know i mean he could have yeah. said something like you know texted a friend like this weirdo's following me or so i mean you never know until you get those cell phone records which is what you have absolutely definitely got to get them um jenny said dave's niece said there was blood on his driver door and inside the cab and on his ship door. I never heard that. I don't know where his niece got that information. There, they they that. claim there wasn't any. I don't know. Uh, and Don, the mechanic, didn't say anything about blood when he had the truck. I mean, they took so long to really investigate it. Anyways, it could have you know been there for one second and then off the next. You know, mm -hmm. honestly, um, I'm trying to see if there's. Um, I think that that is, are there any other questions you guys, we've got about three more minutes. You know, I like to keep these to an hour just out of respect. I know Sarah's very busy. Any other questions, Sarah, what's the number one way that we can help you? I don't know. Just spread the word. Somebody knows something because I mean, my husband was in, he's, very agile for his age i don't think one person could have just taken him down i think it would take more than one um and i do think he was taken everything he didn't just disappear i mean people it's impossible somebody took him and disappeared him i don't know 
somebody knows something and there's a nice size reward that they could take advantage of if they said something so yeah and like what about um what about the award like are people just do you think telling false information to possibly get the award money sorry say again like do you believe that everything that you're all the information you're getting or do you think some of it is just because of the reward money um just a second i know one of my kids is gonna walk in Yeah, I think a GoFundMe needs to get started. Let's see if there's anything. No. Nope. Okay. What were you saying? I'm sorry. I know it's a third time. No, a lot of people are saying that they would chip in for a GoFundMe. Um, I really think you should consider starting one. Yeah. You know? Because you have a lot of support on here. I've seen a lot of stories on the internet. You have a lot of support. So even if someone just gave a dollar, you know what I mean? To help you get closer to that PI. Yeah. I think would be very beneficial. Those would be the two things I did is talk to the DA and find a PI. Like for yeah, sure. I just, you know, I just want to say, I know like some people don't think I'm reacting properly or whatever. And I, I've come, I just don't even care if people, what people think. I, I can't, I don't have time to care if they don't think I'm reacting properly. I work full time. I have four children, two are grown, two are 10 years old. I have, it's not just, I'm a safety coordinator. Like I have a big responsibility at my job. I have a big responsibility at home and I've probably done things wrong, but there's no book that tells you what to do when your husband goes missing. Oh, for sure. I'm doing the best oh, I sure. can. So if my reactions aren't proper in your mind, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, you know, just like Amanda said, you don't owe anything to anyone. This is your life. You're living it. None of us, I can't even imagine going through what you're going through. And we're just here to help any way we can. So I think that, you know, we're going to definitely start, um, we're, we're going to definitely reach out to the, Oh, mud's been i know i'm pronouncing that wrong we're going to uh, try to find a private investigator for you reach out to the district attorney um and see what if there's anything else at all that we can do if anybody has any suggestions in the comments i'm going to end this in like a minute go ahead sarah was there something you wanted to say no i just appreciate your support it's you know what i just don't want to start crying again but well, you have every right to cry, believe me. So I really do think that the GoFundMe account will help you a lot. I have the best followers and I will do another story on it as well. Um, and we'll get, and then maybe even you can contact the local media as well. Yeah, I have, I have their contacts and they do reach out and I've done quite a few interviews already. Um, so if we get this GoFundMe, that would be another whole new layer to their story that they could do a whole new story. Yeah, you're right. People are saying, if you need help with it, let them know, you know, whatever you need. People in my, my followers are just, they're amazing. So whatever you need, just please let me know, let my followers know, and we will absolutely help you. It's been over an hour. You guys know I keep these to an hour out of respect for my guests because I know they're busy and I know these are difficult conversations to have, but I do want to open it up to the floor one more time to see if there is any other questions or comments that any of you guys have before we let Sarah go. And Sarah, I'm going to, uh, while they're doing that, I want to open the floor to you. Last, last minute thoughts, last bits of information you want to get out. No, I, I appreciate any help anyone can, if anyone has any ideas or um, can send people my, I know like God has put so many people in my way to help me and I'm up for anything because I'm trying to keep my household going here. You know, I got to get groceries here in a little bit and I'm the only one here. I can't just bring my boys with me to, I don't know, I work 40 hours a week kids go to school we have functions and i can't do everything so i appreciate any help i can get i'm not turning it down so 
Well, do you have someone who can help you set up a GoFundMe account? Uh, well, I mean, I I can set up a GoFundMe account, but if someone wants to help do that, that's that'd be great. I'm heading to get groceries here pretty quick, and uh, yeah, if somebody wants to set it up, and um, my Facebook is Sarah Bogue Schultz. B o g u e. So put that all in the comments, Sarah. Before we go, um, if and if there is somebody who wants to help Sarah with that. Um, go find me, please shoot Sarah a DM. Sarah, can you put your information again in the comments just so people have it? Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, that's, that is her username right there, Sarah Magnificent Makeup. Um, that's how you can find her on TikTok. She's also tagged in, you know, all the videos that I've done on David as well as this one. People are saying they definitely want to help you. They definitely yeah, want and, to support you. Uh, side note, I, I mean, I do updates daily. I'm counting the days that he's been missing because days matter. You know, every day matters. And if you want to follow on Facebook, um, I make it a point every night to post something. Um, obviously, I don't have much updates on David's search because I don't get them, but I just um, post about my day or post if someone wants to help or if someone has idea i don't know i just try to i do it every day because i don't want his, him to be forgotten i right. want him found right that's why we did this interview because i want to make sure that he is kept in the spotlight i search on the news almost every day under him and there's been nothing um to relate i think the the, the most recent news story was from like three weeks ago and it was like no. yeah when the up to, when the up the reward and that's the other thing they up the reward but then they don't put a poster up right. yeah yeah so those things need to get done for sure and you already have that poster of him that we showed earlier um that yeah, you know, I, jake updated um the the one last night jake updated that one is that um sorry let me put it on the one i shared on facebook today okay yeah, I, don't, I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. But this is a missing posters photo for David. It's got a bunch of information in it along with two photos. Obviously, we encourage you, if you know anything at all about where David might be or you happen to see him that night, to please contact the local police. Or you can call 911 as well um, because Sarah and her family really need some answers. It's been way too long. Thank anything you. Anything else that anyone wants to say or um, I'm trying to get my comments. Nope. Um, no, it, it looks yes. And please do connect with Sarah if you guys aren't following her, please do. Um, so she can keep you up, updated that way as well. Um, so I don't see any more questions at all. Okay, Sarah, anything at last minute you want to say? No, just thanks for not forgetting about us. Never, never. We won't. And we will continue to keep you all in our thoughts and prayers. Look for that GoFundMe. I will definitely post that once that's ready to go. And any updates, Sarah, you know how to get a hold of me. Okay, okay thank you. Thanks you. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate your time. I know this wasn't easy for you, so I appreciate you filling us in. And for obviously for everybody who joined in and asked questions and comments, appreciate you also as well. So with that, you guys have a great rest of your Sunday and we'll talk later. Bye guys. Bye.